if coupon rate on a bond is equal to the current market interest rate and the bond is selling at the par value then in this situation the coupon payments are offering to the bond holder a fair rate of return on her investment in the particular bond but if the coupon rate is lesser than the market interest rate this means that the mere coupon payments are made to the bond holder in this situation these coupon payments are entirely the sufficient to insufficient to compensate the bond holder at the competitive rates now in this situation it is desired by the bond such bond holder to have certain price appreciation and for that purpose uh, bonds are offered at discount to these bond holders in this way an opportunity of built in capital gain is provided to the bond holder through sell, selling them the bond at the discount rate now how to compute built in capital gain we have an example here we have outstanding 7% bond with $1000 par value bonds remaining life is 3 years and the market interest rate is 8% now if we solve this uh, bond valuation equation using the given data we have at p not or the current market price of bond at 974.23 dollar and this is the current price of the bond and if we want to determine the value of the bond after the one year or the before two years of the bond then we have the value of bond at 982.17 dollars so we have two points price at current mark level which is the price not or the p not price after year one which is p1 to determine the capital gain we need to deduct the price uh, current price or the p not from p1 and that capital gain we have at 7.94 dollars now to determine our total rate of return on this bond we need to add this capital gain of 9.74 dollars to the annual coupon payment of 70 dollars the sum of these two figures we will divide over the uh, pr current price which is p naught and the resulting rate of return is the 8 percent and that 8 percent is exactly equal to the market interest rate discount bonds provide capital gain uh, through augmenting a below market coupon rate to provide a fair total rate of return to the bond holders but so far as the premium bonds are concerned these bonds provide uh, interest income greater than what is available in the market so near maturity the prices of premium bonds fall because of uh, remaining few coupon payments which are unpaid and second the resulting capital loss offset the large coupon payments because the price of the bond is falling near the maturity so the capital gains which are available in the initial life of the bonds are going on depletion and they are converting into the capital loss but that capital loss is set off against the larger coupon payments made to the bond holders across the life of the bond bond holders receive only a competitive rate of return in this particular case of premium bonds so how bonds price move over the timeline of the bonds life we have price paths in this regard these price paths of two bonds we have in the picture at the below of the screen uh, each bond is selling at a ytm of 8% for bond 1 we have coupon rate greater than 8% and that 8% coupon rate is depicted here with a thick blue line this bond is suffering from capital losses for second bond which is denoted as b2 uh, we have coupon rate less than eight percent and that is enjoying capital gain because of a uh, price is steadily approaching to the par value we see that bond price approaches par value as the maturity date approaches so these are the path both the bonds are approaching to their par value 
each bond offers investors the same total rate of return what is the relationship between yield to maturity and holding period return we see that fluctuations in yields will change our bonds rate of return that we have already seen an increase in the bonds yield will reduce its price which reduces the holding period return and the vice versa for yield to maturity this is the average return if the bond is held till the maturity of the bond but holding period rate of return is the rate of return over the particular investment time period ytm depends on coupon rate current price and its par value at maturity but holding period returns depend on the bond's price at the end of the holding period and that bond price is in fact an unknown future value for yield to maturity all of the values like current prices coupon rate and par value at maturity are readily available in the market but for holding period rate of return such values can only be forecasted now come to zero coupon bonds zero coupon bond carry no interest at all means these are uh, offering no interest payments to their holders these zero coupon bonds provide all of their return in the form of price appreciation these zero bonds provide only one cash flow to their bond holders at the maturity of the bond the example is the us treasury bills that is the example in the universe of zero coupon bonds treasury stips what these are long term zero coupon bonds are commonly quoted from the uh, coupon bearing notes and the bond each coupon bond may be stripped of its semi annual coupons then each coupon payment would be treated as a stand alone zero coupon bond the final repayment of principal on a zero coupon bond would be treated as an other stand alone zero coupon the treasury program under which coupon stripping is performed is called as a strips and these zero coupon securities are also called as treasury strips there is a question that what should happen to prices of zero coupon bonds as the time passes away we see that zero coupons must be sold for par value on their maturity these bonds may be sold at a discount before maturity due to the effect of time value of money and as the time passes on the prices should approach par value on these bonds and that we see here in the example when time moves from current to the maturity the price of the bond goes on their par value to understand this in further we have an example where we have a zero coupon bond with maturity life of 30 years market interest rate is 10% and at current level the price of the bond is 57.31 dollars and after the one year means for the remaining 29 years the price of the bond is 63.04 so we see that the par value which we discount here that is discounted for less year because its price increased by one year discount factor and that increase in the price level is exponential that we see in the graph this is not linearly until its maturity